throws before woes Three, because two, Luna and one, Stingray one. now have to fight it out in this best of five. Luna, of course, on the Caspian. Stingray, no surprise to see him on the Black Knight. Now, last time we saw Stingray on this map, it was in that matchup against Kaina. And Stingray, of course, as we know, came out victorious. Luna looking like he's going to push things a lot harder than Kaina did. Kaina was really focused on the punish game. Luna is focused on oppression, domination, control, push. One thing, oh, the down sig already. That oh, and that almost took him out too, man. If he had hit a little earlier, might have KO'd the side sig. Not going to do it for Luna, but the down light ground pound will give Luna that stock advantage, but the damage is relatively even. He's got to be careful here. He's been focusing mostly on Katar's... Uh, what a juggle yeah. that we just saw. We don't normally have players extending their juggles that long. And the stock is not going to extend any longer after Stingray takes it out with a side air from the spear. I mean, Stingray's spear play has been on point. Of course, we always love highlighting that down signature, which has been so effective for finishing off stocks. But he's just been doing amazing with the spear overall as he gets Nair juggles all over Luna. If we're talking about the aerial game, Stingray has the Spear Nair. Luna also has Katara Nair. But they're really similar moves, but the range and the coverage is going to favor the Spear. So if Luna and Stingray are on top of one another, the startup might favor Luna, but the aerial oh. combat almost taking off the top. Yeah, Stingray's ability to do everything in the air on the ground, hit a Spear down sig, and take the stock lead away from Luna. Down sig thrown out from Luna. Had Stingray in the edge guard. That might be the thing that he needs as Stingray dodges down to avoid the end sig from Luna. Still on the corner here. Luna taking his time. Throws out the side six. Stingray with the punish. That's a burn dodge. Ooh, okay. He gets so much off of it. Couldn't hit that nair though. Continues with the recovery. Nice damage. Added up. Ground pound from Luna. Going to have his choice of weapons yet again. Going to juggle this one to delay the weapon spawn. But Stingray is going to go in. Doesn't even wait for those eye frames to fully run out. He's going to force them off. The unarmed gameplay coming out from Stingray, even jumping up, hitting that Nair before picking up the Lance. The GCD sig, like two jump heights up. That is a Stingray classic. Yeah, and he's really good at that. Side sig doesn't get the read, though. Stingray tries to punish. Luna's not hitting his signatures, and he needs those for KOs early enough. Down sig. Luna dodges down into it and hits a punish. It's not the biggest one, but he's definitely ready for it. Luna's going to have to be careful. If he's fishing for those signatures, oh! too much. Just like that, I'm getting flashbacks to the Kaina set. The punishes from Stingray on top of Kaina's signatures were what helped Stingray win. It was also what really helped Godly win as well against Kaina. Now Luna getting a little hasty with those. Yes, Caspian has a strong signature kit. Yes, we saw Luna use them really well earlier today, but if he's too reckless with them, if the panic comes out, if the tension sets in and he just lets them rip, he's gonna get himself into trouble. Sometimes when you're fishing, you reel in a big fish and sometimes you get the boot. That time it was Stingray giving him the boot out of game number one, but we're going back to Small Brawl Three, Haven for two, game number one, two. No brawl. character swaps on either side. First hit goes to Luna. Also the first weapon after the unarmed neutral air. Spear is going to be the first option coming in for Stingray. A little bit of pressure going into the edge. We haven't seen too much edge guarding coming out, and that's likely because that's going to favor Luna. That's going to favor the weapons that Luna has on this diamond head, this Caspian crossover. Yeah, it's definitely going to be important for Luna to try to force those edge guard situations because Stingray, he's got such good neutral, he's going to want to play it as long as he can as right now he's keeping Luna on this corner, utilizing those Lance hitboxes as the side air connects and Stingray with the massive lead here in game number two. We also just saw a great example of what Stingray likes to do when he has the Lance in his hand off of the D-Light. That's an option that he'll use and then change up the follow-up after. D-Light in sig will catch you jumping. D-Light in light will catch you going back down to the main platform. But we also saw D-Light in the turnaround neutral air. Luna adding up a lot of guitar damage. Not enough. Luna is behind, ripping yet another signature. He knows these sigs Brother. could be the thing to bring him back. He threw out a Qatar side signature earlier today, which clutched him out a win. But right now, the sigs aren't hitting. They're not KOing, but that will with a grab but he cancels Sidelight to read the dodge of Stingray into the recovery, and he's taking his time before making sure he picks up the guitars. Now, last game, Luna threw out 13 signatures, Duke. He hit eight. 
percent of them. That means he hit one of the signatures he threw out. He's got to figure out either how to use them or he's got to realize it's time to woe back a little bit. And he is getting punished for him. We saw at the end of game number one, he got punished for the whiff signature. This time, he gets the dodge read. Maybe he just needs to play clean neutral with his guitars. They work so well when he can get it going, but the slide charge and Sig will even it up. Looks like he's figured out how to use them. Old choice there. Chugging the weapon, one more. I thought we might see one more based on what we saw earlier. Stingray's gonna grab the spear immediately. Seen him play that vertical game a little bit, starting it off and then changing things up. Going horizontal. The dodge read, Stingray getting some more damage built up onto Luna. Luna, two exclamation points, gets back down, but he still has yet to hit Stingray on this final stock here. Can't fast fall into the nair. Stingray getting hit after hit onto Luna, and he throws away the Katars. He's now unarmed in the open air against Stingray. One more. Almost made a connection with that side air. Weapon spawn is still on the field. Luna's gonna grab it. Doesn't oh! fall into the D sig but the second one. It's just such a strong move. And Stingray knows how to squeeze every ounce of juice out of it. He's so good at doing that. Not just hitting the down sig when he needs to, not just using it to clutch and KO, but he'll whiff one and the opponent almost every time goes, finally, I get to punish this. And Stingray says, ha, nope, does it again and gets the KO. Stingray is up 2-0 over the NAPR number one. One of the favorites alongside Godly for winning this year's world championship. And he is one game away from knocking him out. So we've had a lot of player matchups here at the World Championship that have never happened before. Their career sets are zero to zero. This is not one of those matchups, though. This is going to be 2 -0. 0 2 in favor of Luna, or 2 0, which is the better point of view. <laughs> That's why I need you here, Duke. You show me that correct. It's a point mirror. Of view. You know, it works right. either direction. It just depends on whose point of view you're looking through. And right now, we're looking into the eyes of Luna as he tries to make the decision. This is the most important decision he can make right now. Is he sticking with the Caspian, the thing that's gotten him so far here today? Is he going to switch over to the Mordex, the thing that he's switching? over to in his matchup against Impala. Is he gonna go back to the Classic? Is he gonna bring out the Taros? I don't know what it's gonna be. Probably not the Taros. I, 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 would, I would hope it's not the Taros. <laughs> Probably not the Taros. The Mordex, of course, is the option that he won the Autumn Championship with, where he actually fought Stingray and beat him 3-0. The Autumn Championship was not that long ago, Duke. Luna came in first place in that tournament. Stingray came in fourth place in that tournament playing Orion, Roland, and Vector, but he's sticking with the Orion today, and we're seeing exactly why. It's gonna be the Mordex here for game number three. There's no more second chances. Elimination side of the bracket, and Luna is one game away from getting knocked out of the tournament. Three stocks determine if Luna continues on. Stingray has his choice of characters. He's gonna, he's gonna go with Three, the Black Knight, two, but he can definitely mix one, it up in game four and game five. Now we're moving off of Small Brawl Haven. We're going over to Apocalypse. And this could be the end for young Luna, who everyone thought could be a top two finisher. How many people said Grand Finals was gonna be Luna versus Godly? That was the long theorized uh, end result. We all expected it to be the winner's finals. We all expected it to be the grand finals. And right now, neither one of them is sitting in the grand finals. They're both on elimination side. And Stingray is one game away from eliminating one of those two. Luna hits the ground pound. He's fighting for his life. He picked that one up really high, too, in the air. I wouldn't have expected it coming. I don't think Stingray did either. Luna. Now we're seeing that Mordex really coming out. Now we're seeing why he's such a strong side player. Now we're seeing why he won on a championship. Didn't get the dodge read, but he's definitely getting the damage. Hits the dare here. Stingray in the offstage again. He just got on this second stock, and Luna's already putting him into the orange, but a nice end sig to punish the whip end sig of Luna, and Stingray keeps the stock count even. Getting a lot of mileage off of that Lance neutral signature, now swapping back over to the spear. Luna has a hefty lead under his belt. Almost a full stock. That signature's gonna end short on the corner, doesn't find a connection, actually drops the D-Light recovery. Tournament nerves starting to kick in again, a stage that none of these players have played on before. Luna might have won the midseason invitational, but he did not have a crowd of this caliber behind him while he was playing. 
Nice down air coming out from Luna, sending Stingray over to the right side. Now stuck on the wall, using the active input for the strong D-Light with the greater force, sending Stingray onto his final stock here. Luna needs a victory in this game to gain some momentum to bring the tug of war back in his favor for at least a little bit as he's down 0-2. He's definitely getting this damage. He's doing a good job maintaining the lead that he built in those initial stocks. But Stingray goes oh. big for the ground pound. Stuck in the offstage against a Scythe. It's not a place you want to be. And Luna's taking advantage of it. Hits the side air. Stingray Dodge. gets back up. Almost picked up the second dare. There was a little bit too much force on the first one. The ledge gets D-Light happened to be in the wrong oh! direction. Wuna answers big with a two stop. He holds on, but still, it's a best of five. He narrowly escapes getting knocked out. There's so many opportunities for Stingray to adapt and overcome. We've seen the game four come out both ways in this tournament, where the game three ends up landing in favor of the person who's down 0-2, and then the game four, ends the entire set in a 3-1, but we've also seen incredible comebacks from the player who's at the disadvantage, from the player who's already lost twice. Is this the shot of adrenaline that Luna needs to bring himself back into this one? Three, We're moving away two, from Apocalypse one, over to Fortress of Lions. The big question is, is this the momentum or is this the dub? Stingray sticking with the Black Knight here in game number four. Luna back on the site, not starting off the way that he did in the last one. Needs to start finding that momentum ASAP. Giving Stingray some space there, just back-to-back -back neutral lights. Trying to hit at that 45 degree angle because Stingray is aerial and if you're aerial with a spear, you don't really have any 45 degree angle move. Yeah, it's hard to challenge a Scythe. Scythe loves those 45s, those dares, those nares. Can be so good in the air to air. But on the other side, Stingray staying below Luna, utilizing that spear aerial kit against the small hitbox, but he reads the dodge. Stingray, now the one controlling the ground. Sidelight doesn't get the second dodge read. Stingray with the wake up, just hits the sidelight. Down sick, thrown out. Luna with the punish. A little bit surprised he went for oh, that instead oh. of the strong D-Light. I can't believe that KO. He used the gravity cancel neutral heavy, optimum unarmed vertical force, and he gets that KO just above Luna. Luna now needs to find a way to get this one back into his hands. We've oh, not get the read. seen a lot of Lance Nairs coming out until just now. The neutral light from the middle of the stage. Luna hoping he picked that up on the left side, but no, it's from the middle of the stage. Doesn't lead to the KO. Another Lance neutral air coming out. Luna avoiding these moves. No, but so is Stingray. Another neutral light. Luna keeps this one close. He's behind, but just barely. He gets his choice of weapons. It's going to be the side. Stingray completely staying away from him. Luna having to be the one to move towards Stingray. Stingray doesn't want to fight the weapon disadvantage, but now that he has the spear, he's going to whip that D-Light. Immediate punish from Luna, an easy neutral light. He's just looking for those punishes. Hits the side light, doesn't get the dodge read. Stingray doing a good job mixing it up, making sure he doesn't fall for the same option of Luna every time. There's a weapon spawn on the field. I don't see either player really going for it. Stingray's Incredible work so far has been on the spear. Luna, of course, has been on the site. Yeah, that's the big thing he swapped to this Mordex for. He wants the site, he wants the weapon toss, and it is gonna connect onto Stingray. One stock left between Luna and game number five. Stingray, no weapon spawns. Luna is playing the denial game. Now we're seeing both of them stick with one main weapon, and they're actually doing about similar damage on each weapon. 52% of Stingray's damage is coming from the spear. 54% of Luna's damage is coming from the scythe. Two weapon mains. They're able to play it all so effectively as Stingray back to the spear, throws it away. We've seen him clutch situations like this before. He doesn't hit the ground pound. He hits the down tick. Final stocks here. Will he clutch it out the way he did against Kaina just moments ago? Throwing the weapon away, picking up the lance. Has Luna really high in the air, but of course he's fresh. He just spawned back in. Not really the option to KO off the top. Just a nice neutral air into the recovery. Stingray's gonna have to play something fierce here if he wants to avoid a game five. Avoiding any hits from Luna, but Luna finds the sideline recovery. We're going to game five. Clutch coming out. You even saw the taunt from Luna. 
He's beginning to look much more confident in his own abilities here. He's now proven to himself and everyone else that he's in this for the long haul. We're heading into game five. This is where that endurance starts to come into play. They're game both on five. the elimination side of things. They both have to be ready for the long road ahead of them. After this match, it doesn't get any easier. In fact, it gets much harder as the next person they're going to be running into is the EU's number one, the prodigy, the person that people thought was going to win the world championship godly. But they can't think about the future just yet because they got to win here and now in this final game number five. Like you said, the endurance is huge here. It's been a very long day. It's been a very long weekend. The tension in the room is palpable. These two competitors have been playing all weekend some of the hardest matches of their entire life. Duke is pogging at me, and I don't know if you can tell based on the monitor, once we get the view of the game, I think everyone will realize why Duke had his mouth agape. What a swap Three, two, from Stingray, one, the Lance main, the person who started off as the Orion King is now onto the Queen Nye for game number five. Hoping the spear, hoping the defense are gonna be the things to get him through this. He's not gonna have the same spear down sync that he has with the Orion, something that was so incredibly effective, but he might have the survivability he needs to go up against Luna's Mordex. Down light, goes for the end sync. Luna knows that one's not true. He's able to get away from that one. Queen Nye is his 21 highest level legend. Just a level 41 Queen Nye. We're gonna see those guitars. We've seen him play guitars before. Obviously, we saw the spear earlier today, just a few moments ago. He got Let's three! He has here. It's not working so far. Sidelight into the dodge in read from Luna. Gravity cancel, sidelight recovery. Luna takes the first stock. Stingray landing neutral air. He's got the spear in hand. This has been his comfort weapon for so many matches today. It would be a very interesting outcome if Luna seems to easily oh! secure this game five, but it doesn't look like it's going to be easy whatsoever. Not a walk in the park. This is a hike through the mountains. You have got to have the endurance, the stamina, and the strength to get through this one. Stingray back on the spear, sticking with it. It got him the stock evener. Gets the sidelight, doesn't get the read. Just jumping around, doesn't want to commit. He's going to be feeling that speed penalty that he has by playing Queen Nye. He's not going to be able to move in and out nearly as quickly as virtually any other legend in the entire game. Punished for the whip down six. Side sick from Luna gets punished by Stingray with the side air. Both of them getting into the red here. Not quite enough. Luna chasing for it. Doesn't get the hit that he wants. Stingray fights his way back onto the stage, throws out the down sick, and Luna hits him with the neutral air to throw him away. Luna was too close to get hit by that down sick. There was no hitbox there. He was right on top of Stingray. That's been the play so far. Almost getting the stock with Whoa. that neutral air. The neutral light will do it on the gauntlets. Great punish, great dash cancel into the, uh, sorry, dash jump neutral air off of the ledge from Luna to get himself into that position. And then a fantastic punish on the whiffed gravity cancel. Stingray doesn't hit it. The true combo, the pressure is mounting onto Stingray. And it's even worse because he did hit the D-Light recovery after and it didn't KO. If he hit the GC neutral heavy, that might have KO'd. That's one of the reasons right there that we don't see many people playing Queen Nye. Throughout that signature, even unarmed, Luna was able to get in in time, immediately punish it. She's got high strength, she's got high defense, but she's also got high punishability, and Luna's taking advantage of it, trying to play the unarmed because he's got a weapon primed. He doesn't want to swap to it yet. Stingray on his final moments here. Both of them last stop. Who's it going to be to go up against Godly in the elimination finals? Everybody always says that Stingray is not like other players. Very few players would bet everything here on the Queen Nye and Luna. Oh. The whiff. Stingray getting some hits here. Stingray bet a lot on this Queen Nye. So far, it might be paying all right, but the neutral light will launch that defense from Queen Nye, keeping him alive. Here comes the side. Katars oh, oh. side. Luna easily gets away from it. Punishes weapon toss. The dodge is burned. Recovery comes out. Luna doesn't press it too hard. He knows how close he is. He just has to play some oh. neutral. There it is. 
Luna with the fastball recovery clutches it out in game number five. He is in the hot seat now. He gets a small sigh of relief because that one went down to the wire, but it is not done yet for Luna. You see him in the pajama pants. We trying to be comfy. He wears those a lot, but he's in the hot seat right now. He is not cozy. He is not all jammied up under a blankie with a mug of hot cocoa. The pressure is mounting. He knows how close he was to losing that. He knows how difficult that was. Of all the people here in the top three of BCX 2022, Luna is maybe the most familiar with this pressure. Again, the winner of the Midseason Invitational. He has been in this position before. Maybe not like this, not at this caliber. You can see how pumped he is after he got that recovery. But man, he is not done yet. But we got to throw it over to the analysts to see what they have to say about Luna versus Stingray. What a well great fantastic match with luna coming up on top oh my goodness i'm sure he can feel the pressure now as he keeps moving forward Foda, i want to hear your thoughts about the outcome of this match I, oh my goodness sheepy i was so excited for the queen nine pick oh uh, yeah coming from stingray i was gonna be that's gonna be so awesome and it, it was it was awesome but luna just a, a reverse sweep right he was yeah. down 2-0 and brought it back, winning 3-2 over Stingray. And wow, he did so much to bring it back. Uh, Luna is insane. He, we know he's got it on land. He's the mid-season invitational champion. Yep. Yeah? Well, and it, it was that, that swap over to the Tai Lung that did it for him, you know? He, yeah. He seemed a little uh, not quite as comfortable on the guitars. And once he got that...